When you look into the stars at night, do you ever see satellites going past and wonder what it is that they do? My name's Quilly and I work at Plymouth Marine Laboratory alongside scientists who work with satellites and satellite data on a daily basis. And today we're going to be talking to Dr Hema Kulk, who's one of these scientists, about some of the work that she does with this data. Hi Hema. Hi Quilly. So tell me, what is it that we actually see when we look at the ocean from space? So one of the most striking things um, when you watch the Earth from space is the fastness of the ocean. About 70% of our world is covered by water. And it's not just blue when we look at the ocean, it can also be green or brown. And those different colors you can see from shore, but the coolest thing about satellites is that we can see those colors globally every single day. Yeah, I remember a couple of years ago seeing a amazing satellite imagery. I think it was a coccolithophore bloom um, and these crazy turquoise swirls across the water. So what do these colours actually mean and why do they matter? Scientists have studied ocean colour for over a hundred years and one of the things that causes the ocean colour to change are phytoplankton and coccolithophores are a type of phytoplankton. Hema mentioned that scientists have been measuring ocean colour for over a hundred years, since long before technology like drones and satellites existed. One of the first instruments used was the so-called Secchi disc. This is quite a simple instrument, but it is actually very effective. It's essentially a white or black and white circle that is lowered into the water to measure the clarity and colour of the water. The point at which the disc is no longer visible tells us about how transparent the water is and the colours tend to range from blue to green to brown which tells us if there are things such as phytoplankton or sediments present in the water. What I really like about a Secchi disc is that the design is very simple and you could easily even go and make one at home and go and measure the colour of the water in a pond, lake, river or even the sea near you. We're now heading out on one of the University of Plymouth's field trips to see how water quality sampling happens on a boat and to talk through the slightly different techniques and instruments that are used. We're interested in using light to do that sort of recording of what's in the water. So we need to be able to measure the light and then we need to be able to grab some of the water and then analyse that down, down the line to see what's exactly in it. To measure the light, we can do that in two ways. We can either do it the old school, uh, original way. Now this is called a, uh, it's a Secchi disc. It works by you lower it over the side of the boat and uh, to a depth where you can't see it anymore. And then you lift it up slightly until you can just see it. And then you record basically how long the bit of string is that you've lowered it on. The high tech way of doing that kind of reading is to use this kind of device. So this is a radiometer. So that means it measures the light intensity and what we're able to do with this particular radiometer is point it into the water or point it at anything. We can measure the colour color of your top there um, and that means that we can get a very exact reading of the intensity of the light and also the colour of the light. So the second thing that we need to do is to then collect a sample of the water and then we can actually see what's in the water uh, from that, that sample. We use this device which is called a Van Dorn uh, water sampler. It's got this spring loaded mechanism which allows us to send it down with the ends open and we then uh, lower it down on this uh, line and then we, when it's at the depth that we want, maybe one metre below the surface, we slide this lump of metal which is called a messenger down the line which then triggers uh, the ends to close and that means that we've grabbed that water sample that we can then bring back on board the boat. And then we can decant that into a container like this. And it enables us to then start to see the kind of the differences within the water, ranging from if we've collected it up the estuary and it's full of the sort of the uh, suspended material and also the dissolved material that's come off the land versus if we've gone out into clearer ocean water where the, uh, you can see uh, there's much less stuff within the, uh, the sample. Looking at the ocean from satellites or drones gives us a really great big picture view of ocean colour. But as Alex said, to really understand what's going on, we need to roll up our sleeves and collect some actual samples. So now we're heading back to the slipway with Hema to collect a sample of our own to analyse. This ground tree thing is a really crucial step that allows us to make sure that satellite images match up exactly with what's happening below the surface.
So now that we've got our samples back at the lab, we're going to pay a visit to Claire Widdicombe, who is a senior plankton ecologist here at PML, and she's going to show us what's inside the water. Hi, Claire. Oh, hi, Quilly. Thank you so much for your time. That's OK. Um, so here are the marine water samples that we've just collected from the Plymouth Sound. Great. Let's have a look and see what's in there. Thank you. Brilliant. Um, so what are we actually expecting to see in this water sample? So we are expecting to see plankton. And specifically for me, it's the phytoplankton, which is the smallest types of plankton. Um, and that's made up of several different groups. We've got diatoms, dinoflagellates, coccolithophores, um, and hundreds and hundreds of different species. And why is it that it's the phytoplankton specifically that we're interested in? The phytoplankton form the base of marine food webs, and they pr produce the oxygen, they take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, they export the carbon, fixed carbon, as marine snow to the seafloor. So they're actually fundamental to all marine ecosystems. And within the plankton, there are many, many, many different species. So we're interested in the diversity of those species as well. Great. Well, should we have a look at the sample then? Yes, let's. So here we have the sample and you can see beautifully the different types of phytoplankton. So here we have a lovely chain of a diatom called Eucampia. And these are little single cells that, that join up to make these lovely big colonies. And then we have a different datum here, and we have a different datum here, and then we have a different type of, of phytoplankton, um, a dinoflagellate here. And of course, at the moment, they don't seem to have much colour, but they all contain uh, chloroplasts, which they will obviously harvest the sunlight. And of course, when they are there in the sea in such high concentrations, that what gives the colour that the satellites can see. That sort of greeny yeah. tinge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Very beautiful. Wow. So obviously with the microscope, it's just taken a little bit of the colour out, but, um, but they do all have very different colour signatures, for want of a better word. So, yes. Amazing. Thank you so much, Claire. You're welcome. Now that you know what the different colours in the water mean, you can imagine just how useful this is. We can look at a satellite image from anywhere in the world and get a pretty good idea of what's in the water and even spot signs of pollution or poor water quality. Clean water is essential for health and livelihoods, but pollution can carry really dangerous diseases, which is where Hema and the team come in. They're using ocean colour to detect waterborne diseases from space, and I'll let her tell you a bit more. One of the exciting uses of ocean colour in our research is monitoring uh, of human diseases in our aquatic environment. And we specifically look at waterborne diseases such as cholera. Um, by analysing water colour, we can detect changes in the water quality that might signal the presence of human pathogens. For example, at one of our study sites um, in the southwest of India, we know um, that cholera bacteria are present when there's a lot of phytoplankton present. Uh, and while we cannot see the bacteria from space, we can ask estimate the risk uh, based on our observations of phytoplankton using the ocean color uh, observations from the satellites. And collecting data directly um, from the water is really important to make sure that we use the satellite information correctly. Um, and tools like the Seki disks um, still help us with this. Um, and we work together with citizens in India who use the Seki disks to collect information on water quality. It is incredible how much the colour of the ocean can tell us about what's going on inside the water. And what an experience to speak to Hema, Claire and Alex about the research that they do and how understanding ocean colour can really impact our lives and livelihoods. So that's a wrap for today and thank you so much for joining us. <laughs>